Local anesthetic toxicity. Local anesthetics are used routinely in emergency medicine and in primary care for minor procedures and local anesthesia. They can also be used for regional nerve blocks. Drugs in this class include procaine, chlorprocaine, tetracaine, latocaine, mepivacaine, and bupivacaine, with bupivacaine being the most toxic. Those factors that influence the drug toxicity include the specific agent, and again bupivacaine is the most toxic, the dose, the rate of administration, the injection site, whether or not there's a vasoconstrictor such as epinephrine included with the local anesthetic, and then the acidity of the environment. These drugs act as sodium channel blockers that cause both cardiac and neurotoxicity if a significant enough dose is administered systemically. Classic scenario here is that during a regional pain block procedure, the patient is accidentally injected with intraarterial bupivacaine. The patient complains of some perioral numbness and tinnitus, develops some lightheadedness, confusion, and then loss of consciousness followed by seizures and then cardiac collapse. As far as the signs and symptoms of local anesthetic toxicity, I've created sort of a loop that goes through the signs and symptoms from general severity being the most mild, the perioral numbness, to the most severe, which is cardiac collapse. And as well, the signs and symptoms, they tend to present in this order as well. Patient might initially complain of some perioral numbness or paresthesia, some generalized tinnitus, they might feel lightheaded or dizzy, become a bit confused, become unconscious, develop seizures, progress into a coma, and then exhibit cardiac collapse. Neurotoxicity is often more frequently seen prior to cardiac toxicity. With bupivacaine, again, the most toxic, neuro and cardiac toxicity can occur concurrently and simultaneously. And it's usually the inadvertent intravascular injection of local anesthetic that precipitates toxicity. Now the treatment for local anesthetic toxicity is supportive, includes airway support and cardiac monitoring, benzodiazepines can be given for seizures, and IV lipid emulsion, which I describe here or show here using bacon, can potentially absorb that toxic local anesthetic from the circulatory system. One would follow standard ACLS protocols for cardiac collapse. The antidote known as lipid emulsion, which I've drawn here bacon to simulate, and the heart reporting that bacon grease to the rescue, is a very interesting type of antidote. What this often is, is a quote, last ditch antidote for cardiovascular collapse that's caused by lipophilic drugs. It's used for cardiac collapse that's been caused by either local anesthetics, as we've discussed in this case, tricyclic antidepressants, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, bupropion, herbicides, some pesticides, lamotrigine, and Haldol. As far as the dosage goes, there's no concrete dosing guidelines as of yet, but most case reports suggest that using 20% lipid emulsion fat at a dose of 1.5 milliliters per kilogram, IV push over one to two minutes, continued by an infusion set at 0.25 milliliters per kilogram per minute, can be helpful in case the patient has been overdosed on a lipophilic drug. The proposed mechanism is referred to as the lipid sink. The thought is, is that the patient had overdosed on some sort of lipophilic drug. In this case, it was a local anesthetic that caused cardiac collapse. The injection of the 20% lipid emulsion at a dose of 1.5 milligram per kilogram caused the lipid sink phenomenon, where in the cardiotaxic lipophilic drug, is now pulled back into the circulatory system and is bound through the process known as the lipid sink and this again allows the heart to resume normal cardiac activity.